Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of On Deck. On Deck is loosely inspired by the US-based TV show Shark Tank, where contestants make a brief pitch about their businesses to a handful of potential investors. And if the investors like the product, they strike a deal for equity right there on the spot. On Deck is a little bit different from Shark Tank because none of us on the host panel are VCs or early stage investors. However, we do bring years of experience operating in the blockchain space and want to help provide useful feedback to the teams that will be pitching their products, projects, or dApps today. Ultimately, we really want to help amplify the opportunities and minimize the constraints of each project so they can be more successful in applying to NEO's Elevate program. Elevate is a funding initiative with $20 million available to builders who are seeking to launch a new or existing project on NEO X, NEO's EVM sidechain. The program aims to empower early stage projects by ensuring they have funds to develop, grow, and effectively scale operations. There are three tracts in the Elevate program, Genesis, Partner, and Investment. The Genesis tract is for early stage projects and offers up to $50,000 in funding per grant. And this track is intended for projects that are building in any Web3 vertical um, or providing educational resources, tooling, or other sort of features. The second track is partner, and that is for established infrastructure projects that are already live on EVM networks and have users or traction. And the last track is the investment track, which offers funding packages of up to $500,000 and this is oriented towards projects with a minimum of six months operation and a proven business model. For anyone who's listening to this, there can, they can find more information about the Elevate program at www.x.neo.org backslash Elevate. So with the intro for the show out of the way, I would like to briefly introduce the hosts on the host panel today. And with that said, um, let's jump right off with Gil. Could you give us a brief intro into who you are and what you do in the NEO ecosystem? Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Gil. Uh, I could tell you that I'm a researcher, a software engineer, entrepreneur, you know, many things. But in summary, uh, I'm a builder. I build things. I build innovation. So I started in the blockchain industry like early on, uh, working on my first pro Bitcoin project back in 2013 at the University of Zurich. Uh, later then, I co-founded X Labs, and since uh, around 2018, I've been contributing to the to the new ecosystem by mostly driving innovation and helping to shape its governance as a council member, uh, and also through uh, Grand Shares DAO. Uh, I'm also one of the main drivers of New X, uh, which I kind of leverage my experience in the EVM uh, ecosystem. I'm excited to be part of of the show. Cool. Uh, I'm very excited as well. And for folks who may have never heard of me before, I'm Dylan Grabowski, and I've been working in the NEO ecosystem since January 2018. Uh, my main kind of hat is an editor at NEO News Today, where we cover any and all projects that are building in or around the NEO ecosystem. I'm also the host of the Smart Economy podcast, a protocol agnostic podcast that is dedicated to highlighting the brilliant minds across the blockchain and crypto space. And alongside Gil, I'm also a voting member of Grant Shares, which is a community funding DAO. And I'm also just a general jack of all trades for in-person events from manning the booth at uh, conferences that NEO has a footprint at to hosting local events like educational events, general investor events, and developer workshops. So that's a little bit about today's hosting panel and the first episode of On Deck a very brief intro to the projects that we'll be hearing from today. We'll be hearing from Pixuti, a multi-chain NFT board racing game. We'll be hearing from Mine Matrix, a customizable trustless mining protocol. We'll be hearing from a sister, a, a AI project that is establishing a network of community-owned small language models, and potentially from ZNS Connect, a decentralized communication ID platform that is powered by decentralized addresses with unique domain names. So with the show's intro and both the host panel's introductions out of the way, uh, I would like to uh, give the mic to Alex from Pixuti, 
Um, and you have seven to 10 minutes to provide your pitch on your project. Let's go. Thank you very much. Nice to see everyone today. And thanks for such opportunity. Uh, today, it will be a mix of pitch deck and real demo. So uh, Pixudi uh, is a web 2.5 uh, board game. And currently we have about um, 200, more than 200,000 uh, total users. The best example of how we about our success that uh, always we are on the top of the radar and if you open the main page you can find our wonderful icon um so also we have about 1 million total hours played uh, about 1 million total games played and we really the first blockchain web 2.5 board game in some long chains, we are top one app, and in some of them, and we are uh, top 50 on the radar in all games. So, PixuD is an RPG board game built on blockchain technology, and we uh, we are coming from Web2, where game studio that decided that it would be cool to transfer some mechanics from Web2 to Web3. Because, uh, for example, in games like World of Warcraft, it's hard to sell the gold because it's illegal. But in blockchain, you can implement some mechanics with NFT, with token, and user will be able to uh, easily sell uh, their items, uh, tokens, and so on, without, and it will be legal. So our main goal is to introduce blockchain technology to millions of web to users globally. And right now, 40% of our total users are coming from web two. Let's, uh, so that's our game. Uh, there is a lot of different mechanics. I don't have enough time to describe them all, but the main thing that we have already implemented the, the, here, it's one way synchronization technology. It means that you can easily log in uh, with uh, new line wallet, with nail wallet, and also you can easily log in with your email, and you will be able to use the same items in one profile. It allows us to launch as soon as possible Nintendo Switch version for Pixudi, and it allows us to onboard web to users more effectively. Uh, so the main problem that we are trying to solve is attraction uh, of web to users. And uh, many web users don't understand why do they need blockchain? Why do they need it? Uh, because they have already enjoyed different games without it for so long. In Pixuli, we're committed to tackling these challenges in a practical approach. We integrate blockchain, we integrate the blockchain as a technology in our gaming engine. And we prioritizing technology Overhype. That's the reason why we decided to first launch the game to show what can we do and how can we do without any uh, token sales. Uh, market size, why we are focusing on Web2, because market size overview uh, shows us that Web2 audience is much bigger than Web3. And it's very important to attract audience, especially we are now focusing on Southwest Asia audience. Uh, because um, gaming audience uh, here is wonderful, and we have participated. Uh, we have participated on Token Twenty Forty Nine, and also we, we have participated in Korean Blockchain Week, and we see how the game market in these countries raises very much. Uh, our target audience is everyone from fourteen to sixty-five, and so. On. They are able to do a lot of different things because you can just play, you can earn uh, points in the leaderboard, and uh, we uh, distribute some some rewards for users uh, from the top. Uh, here we have users from different blockchains, Neo blockchain, Core blockchain, different other uh, different blockchains, even none of them. We have implemented all of them in one game. And I think one of the most interesting te technology thing that uh, we have this multi-chain engine. 
uh, we have a lot of a lot of wonderful uh, things in the game, game characters, and there is a lot of opportunities what to do in Vixudu. Uh, gamers can play on different boards. They can collect different items. They can complete uh, quests, for example, like like this. Uh, Oh, sorry, <laughs> some spoiler. Uh, they can level up, they can trade, they can play mini games, and they can enjoy wonderful, uh, wonderful illustrations that uh, was uh, created by our wonderful team of uh, designers. By the way, now uh, I have joined uh, into sorry uh, uh, viewing mod uh, some of the game which is happening right now, and we can see that. Everybody is playing. Uh, so we have three token system, project token, in gems, and shards. Two of them are off chains and project token, and it's very important, uh, hasn't been launched yet. Uh, by the way, after talking with some advisors on this wonderful uh, Korean blockchain week and Singapore uh, token 2049, we have uh, redesigned our Xudi total uh, token supply. We have decided to focus especially on our community. As you can see, we uh, decided to distribute 6% uh, for advisors, 7% for investors, only 10% for the team, uh, something for exchanges. And for user rewards, we will distribute 35% uh, percent of our uh, total supply. And for ecosystem development, and it's also for users, because ecosystem development means grants, uh, marketing and initiative, partnerships, uh, special creator program. Uh, I will talk about this later. And yep, reserve fund. It's our updated uh, studio tokenomics. And if you will be interested, I will share the new slide with this token. Um, we are web to business. That's why we're focusing not on pumping or dumping token. We are focusing on revenue, on standard game revenue. And it can be very huge uh, because the total estimate monthly revenue, which we are going to aim is uh, 700,000 700, uh, USD per month. Franchise. It's very important. I'm the big fan of um, Pokemon TCG cards, uh, different marriage. That's why we want Pixel Universe to expand and grow into franchise. And it might include different comic books. For example, we have already started to prepare the paper version of our first uh, board, uh, Searching for the Dragonstone. And we will distribute it for the persons who bought a legendary pack in the early beginning. We have wonderful team. And by the way, this team is twice, uh, it's uh, grow, uh, uh, two times uh, because it's the old slide of our team, but we have seven more people right now. Roadmap uh, will be updated a little bit later, but uh, I will tell you more in the end of this uh, pitch deck. I will tell you more about our wonderful new concept that we are preparing with the most active networks Oh, you can see something like, oh, what is Neo? Uh, so it's uh, the, we decided to uh, prepare a special concept, Big Studio Multiverse. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, we have different boards. For example, we have two boards right now. We expecting to have another special board for uh, new blockchain, uh, for new blockchain. But also, uh, we will allow uh, users to generate board uh, by themselves. They will be able to, uh, I mean, every time you will play on our board, it will be different because it will collect it from different pieces. And that's how our creator program will work uh, for ecosystem development. We will allow users like in Sandbox or uh, Minecraft to create uh, pieces and create their own board. And it's, the most important milestone for us uh, in the end of the or this year and on um, in the beginning of the next year. Um, so I think I try to describe everything. Um, to make some conclusion of everything that I have said right now, first of all, uh, 
as I have already mentioned, we are aiming to attract investors for 7% of the total supply. Uh, and we're aiming to collect about 2 million USD right now. Uh, we maybe will recuperate these numbers, but this is right now. And right now, we're aiming to launch the XUD token uh, in the next year. That's why uh, right now we are attracting investors to our project. And so the XUD, uh is ideal way uh, is a little way to connect Web2 and Web3 because we have already have uh, partnerships with several gang guilds. And I will make some confusion with my sentence that I have prepared before. If you're looking for a project that puts its users above all else, and we are such project, because again, we're not launching token just to airdrop this token as all. We both a robotized monetization model and aims to bridge the gap between two worlds. And Pixudi is the place to be. We aim to bridge two worlds, Web2 and Web3. Awesome. And we're good. Let's yeah. spend 10 okay. minutes. Thank you. Um, oh, thank cool. You. Sorry. Well, Alex, I mean, so I've actually played Pixudi before. Um, I've been playing the game for as long as it's been live on Neo N3. So uh, actually, let me start my, my timer. Um, oh, so, uh, so uh, everything actually, is okay? Was, so, oh, sorry. And do you see my screen? Uh, oh. No, we weren't able to see your screen, but um, I think you did a very good job at uh, describing everything. Um, and for folks who aren't oh. aware of like Pixudi, you can go to Neo News today to to read more about it. Um, something that kind of really stuck out to me in your pitch was that Pixudi is consistently at the top of DAP radar, and there's been over a million hours played. So could you share a little bit more about the amount of users that you've had uh, play the game? Uh, what's like the average activity like for Pixudi uh, as a game? Uh, uh, can I ask you to allow me to share the screen for one minute? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so it's the game <laughs> which I have uh, shown. It's uh, our wonderful new concept of Pixudi Multiverse. Um, and, and this is a wonderful picture with uh, top us on the radar and on the first uh, screen. Um, okay, uh, you're talking about uh, how many active users we have per day and per month. Yes, uh, per day we have about uh, 60, uh, 60k uh, users, uh, and uh, per month we have right now. Right now we have much more than in previous month. Uh, right now we have about uh, 250 k users uh, per uh, per month. Awesome, Gil. Do you have? Uh, I have plenty yes. of feedback. So go. Yes, for I it. have. I have, I have like many questions as well, but uh, we have like limited time. So uh, something that is very interesting for me, Alex. And I'd like that you just explained very shortly about it is that you mentioned two or three times that you Web3 is embedded into the game engine. And uh, also that, um, that you, that you uh, have this multi-chain engine. So can you explain a bit like how you embedded Web3 to the game engine, you know, and, and, and how, because you had to embed this into which level and uh, yeah, just, just, just briefly tell this. Okay. Uh, so for example, uh, here uh, in profile, users can connect different chains and they will be able to see NFT in all blockchains in one profile. And also, I can even log in not with, for example, Neo Line Wallet. I can log in even with my email, but I will be able to use the same game items uh, which I have in my profile because we synchronized blockchain with our own database and we allow people and it allows us to launch the app on Nintendo Switch. How? For example, I have some NFTs here. All these NFTs synchronized with the main database. I can easily link my Nintendo Switch account here. And when I will log in uh, from Nintendo Switch, backend will uh, give me all my NFTs. 
yes, I won't be able to sell them. I won't be able to, you know, to, to, to transfer them, but I will be able to use them in the game, open mystery packs and so on and so on. Uh, and also, and in addition, it's a multi-chain because we can connect wells from different networks. Currently, we have about eight networks, I guess. We have active networks uh, uh, like uh, like this one and uh, like also Neo. And uh, we have not very active uh, networks. Uh, that's why we have decided to divide. Uh, so that's it. That's uh, how it yep. works. And it helps us to onboard users because you can easily log in with Discord, Twitch, email. In our game, you can play, you can be yes. the top in the leaderboard. But if you decided yep. to buy some items, you need to connect your wallet. Uh, just just to follow up. Go for it. Just a follow up, like Dylan. So so um, this brings me to the to the something else that you said about uh, bringing web to users to web three, which is uh, integrate with merge. So did I understand that correctly? That you have to that you want to bring like Pixuti game to physical objects out there uh, or something like this, or this was a mis uh, misunderstanding from my side. Uh, what do you mean physical objects? Like merch, um, I don't know if I understand yes. correctly. But merch is like uh, caps or shirts or uh, physical items or uh, bring the brand, you know, of Big City to to you know to real world uh, um, assets. Let's put this yes. way. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, first of all, we wanted to uh, distribute our paper version of the game. Uh, it's a concept. It's a concept, but we have already. Uh, find the distributor who can work. Uh, who can work with um, uh, Korean and who can work with Europe to distribute our game. Uh, the first, uh, uh, the first, uh, our first board, so, uh, board searching for the dragon stone, and we wanna to me. Uh, I mean, it's our marketing strategy to attract users from web to. We wanted to do the same things, uh, which, for example, Pokemon, Nintendo, Nintendo Pokemon do, TCG cards, different merch, uh, board, uh, different game, uh, board games, and so on, because it's something that really helped to attract users uh, who will then pay for some skins and so on in the game. Yes, uh, in the next year. We are uh, uh, we are planning to distribute more merch with Pixudi from our side. Yes. Cool. So we're at the end of our uh, time for the back and forth, but um, I do kind of want to end on one last question. Um, and this is really to help you when you draft a proposal for the Elevate program. So there is $20 million that's available for through the Elevate program, which is oriented towards projects that are building on Neo X. So we see that you've built Pixuti on Neo N3, there's Neo Line integration, there's integration with other Neo wallets, um, and you also have a history within the Neo ecosystem. So if you're going to be pr proposing funding from the Elevate program, there's going to need to be some of the Neo X EVM sidechain component. So do you have any ideas for how you're going to integrate support for Neo X onto Pixuti? Uh, will you be launching the Pixuti token on Neo X? Um, will you be launching an NFT series on Neo X? Uh, will you just be able to copy and paste any other EVM support that you have for other EVM chains and just make it possible mm -hmm. to do similar things for Neo X? Just really kind of um, to help you um, envision how you're going to be implementing the EVM chain. Uh, so first of all, uh, we will implement uh, the same mechanics that we have already have on other EVM networks for sure. Uh, then uh, there's something that we haven't implemented yet, but we can implement it uh, um, exclusively. We are thinking about implementing uh, evolution NFT. It means that uh, right now all NFTs are regenerated, and when I change equipment on the uh, character. Um, it's um, just saving in the database, but we wanted to integrate the new standard of NFT in the Pixuti when you will be able to create um, to create NFT from different other. Uh, I mean, legs uh, legs will be 
one NFT, head will be another NFT, and then you create uh, NFT from one NFT from them. It calls, um, I forgot, this, uh, there is a standard for this. Okay, uh, we will create NFT from other pieces of NFT. And another thing uh, which we uh, will, which we will integrate for sure, uh, it's uh, creating um, the new generative generative bots. They will be generated from NFT pieces. I mean, every user, uh, we will have a guide and every user will be able to contribute uh, to Pixudi. Like in Sandbox you uh, or Minecraft, you can create your own object lens. They have special. Uh, they have special uh, constructor for this. In Pixudi, we are developing our own uh, constructor, where users will be able to add and draw their own uh, pieces of the board with uh, special effects and so on. And these pieces will be minted as an NFT. Then our engine will, for example, if you want to create your own board from your pieces, you can buy other NFTs or you can create your own and then generate your own board for your friends, family, and so on. That's how we uh, want to launch our creator program. And that's something that will be, if we again will be chosen, uh, that's something will, uh, which uh, will be integrated in Neo X2. Cool. Thanks a lot, Alex. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Have a good time, Alex. Thanks a lot. We got to hop on to the next guest. So uh, thanks for, for your time today, Alex. It was awesome to catch up and, and see you again. Uh, it was nice to see you in Singapore, yeah. even though we didn't get to chat <laughs> thank much. You, thank you. Um, thank so, yeah. you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Alex. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a nice day. And yes. thank you for this opportunity. Take care. Bye. Hey, Penny, how's it going? Hello. Hello, everyone. Yeah, hey, I can do well. Are you, hey, Penny, are you with Mind Matrix? Yes. Awesome. Um, so I don't think you were on when we did the kind of overview for what uh, the show is. The show is really just to hear a seven to 10 minute pitch about Mind Matrix. And then uh, we'll provide some insights into how Mind Matrix might be able to identify the strengths and to minimize the constraints when applying for Elevate program funding through NEO. And Elevate program is a $20 million grant program that has three separate tracks. Um, there's the Genesis track for early stage projects and offers funding for up to $50,000. And this is for any Web3 vertical or educational content, or just creating tooling and toolkits in the Neo X EVM sidechain ecosystem. Then there's the partner tract, which is established infrastructure projects that are already live on EVM-based networks and have users or traction. And then lastly, there's the investment tract, which is offering a funding package of up to $500,000. And that's oriented towards projects that are already established that have a minimum of six months of operations and have a proven business model. So after we listen to um, your pitch on Mind Matrix, we'll really try to provide some, some key insights into identifying how um, you can kind of highlight uh, what works best when proposing um, a proposal to elevate grant program. So with all that said, um, could you please just introduce yourself and then give us your seven to 10 minute pitch about Mind Matrix and when you have 90 seconds left, I'll put my phone up and just say that you have 90 seconds left. Okay, okay, that's awesome. Thank you for your uh, detailed introduction. So my name is Penny and uh, I'm the founder of My Matrix. And uh, My Matrix is a customizable uh, mining protocol to help um, crypto projects to connect better with their communities. And uh, I will share uh, slides. Can I share my screen? Yeah. There we go. I just uh, offered you. Um... Yes, that works. Okay, you can. You all can see my screen, right? Yeah. So um, I'll start with what is my matrix. So um, my matrix offers a timer-based mining template that blends strategic gameplay together uh, with fair distribution. And the main problem we are trying to address is um, 
uh, vi violators in fair distribution. We all know that uh, in airdrops, ex exploiters grab almost all the rewards through uh, civil attacks and uh, leaving real users almost nothing. Um, so traditional solutions to this problem usually involves high gas fees uh, and uh, third party verification. But these, um, these solutions can be tedious, costly, and uh, violate users' anonymity. That's the least thing they want to lose in Web3. So um, and Matrix tries to address uh, these problems by integrating NPR challenges into a game-based mining system. So let's look at these pictures um, here. So in... Um, games powered by my matrix, players will assemble miners. We can see three miners here with these activities. And uh, some of these activities consume uh, some substances and uh, produce other substances. Uh, but there are some special activities which can produce the target substance. So apparently this target substance is what decides the final rewards of players can get um, in this game. Let's see an example. This is Automata, one of our customers. So this is the miner. Their miner is called Automata and the, this Automata will be assembled by programs here. So they change programs from activities in our template. Let's see the video. Okay, so this Automata uh, 2, we are assembling Automata 2. It was just assembled with Biogen program, Crystera program, and Astromine program. And here are the substances I mentioned in, uh, in the template. Let's see how this Automata work. Watch carefully here. So this automata after the first activity, the first program as it queues, it takes in these two, they call uh, outer space resources because uh, their story is based on uh, outer space uh, moon colonization and uh, produce the third, res uh, th third resource. Okay, so how can we, um, achieve fair distribution with such uh, game templates uh, because uh, games powered by matrix will have its complexity, say balancing shared and exclusive substances. Uh, when, we when we say shared substances, I mean, let's see this picture, substance one can be produced by minor one, but it can be used by minor two. But for exclusive substances, it can only be uh, uh, produced by miner to itself and used by itself. Uh, as for coordinating miners, let's see here. So two miners are um, evolving with uh, evolving with uh, the same substance one. So miner two consume substance one uh, in one unit every ten seconds, but miner one can only produce one unit of substance one in every 20 seconds. That means miner one is too slow to support miner two. So finally, miner two will die. So with these uh, strategy uh, requirements in uh, my matrix games, they are able to um, prevent boss exploiting uh, the rewards in the game and uh, leave real users uh, equal opportunities to gain rewards while playing. So while we uh, ensure fair, trend, uh, fair distribution, we still uh, uh, is able to, uh, are able to uh, immerse users in fun gameplay. Uh, the first element is that activities are generated based on players' current inventory. That means no matter how bad a player's current inventory is, we can always generate activities tailored to uh, its condition and the players can always find a way to move forward. They won't find this game too difficult to play. But uh, target substance generating activities are inefficient. That means um, target substance generating activities uh, consume a lot of basic and um, intermediate 
substances, like in this picture. They consume a lot of these, but only produce very little target substance. So in general, players will find it uh, very easy to accumulate a lot of basic and the intermediate substances, uh, but it's not that easy to accumulate a lot of target substance. So we, uh, uh, with, with these two mechanics, we are able to keep the game at a perfect level of difficulty to prevent civil attacks while uh, keeping players engaged. And uh, we also maintain a trustless environment by uh, storing key data, including user accounts, uh, balances, and um, game states on chain on layer one or layer two. Uh, because uh, my matrix is powered by ZKWASM service, so uh, every uh, app powered by my matrix functions as an app as a rollup. So um, the game server calls runs in ZKWASM virtual machine. And we can see in this picture as a transaction executes, proofs, ZK proofs will be generated in ZKWASM hub and the proofs together with the game state differences will be uploaded on chain. And only after proofs are verified, uh, the state differences will be confirmed on chain. So with all those um, advantages, my matrix template can provide how can project builders utilize us. Uh, it's very easy. They only need to define uh, their background story, uh, substance and activity names. Let's see automata example again. So they change substances to outer space resources. There are um, Anacor, Nexium, SwiftX, they have strange names because they are outer space resources and they change activities to programs. So program one consumes um, Anacor, Nexium and produces SwiftX. And with these programs, players can assemble automata. So automata in this game uh, is the miner in our template. Uh, and this automata has a program four because program four produces titanium and titanium is the target substance in this game. So uh, that means this, this automata can produce the target substance titanium. Uh, player's goal is to mine as much titanium as possible. So um, yeah, that's basically all about my matrix. We uh, power fair distribution while uh, immersing users in fun gameplay and uh, we provide a trustless environment and uh, easy custom uh, customization. Yeah, that's all. Very cool. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm curious, does the game need to, you say that you store uh, data on L2s or L1s, but the underlying mechanics is essentially mining. So is the player trying to mine uh, blocks on the mine matrix chain or are they mining blocks for some other proof of work chain? Oh, by saying mining, uh, this, this mining uh, basically means um, game fi or DeFi. So yeah, users can gain uh, rewards by playing our game. So the amount of, uh, let's say the, the automata example, the amount of titanium they accumulate will be converted to say project tokens. Oh, cool. so yeah, I'm nice. Going. Yeah, nice, nice, nice project, Penny. Um, so uh, I, I'm just curious, like, I'm just trying to, to think out of the box here, just, mm -hmm bringing like to the next level. So is this something that you see to also be used as proof of humanity, you know, in the future or proof of, I don't know, to be used in other mechanisms uh, that goes beyond like this, uh, a, a game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of the point. Uh, we prevent simple attacks. We prevent bots by verifying uh, real users. So because this game has its complexity, you need to uh, do real-time adjustment, real-time resource management, so we can tell who are real users and who are bots. But yes, I, this whole thing, yeah, in the gameplay. Yeah, so so my role here is to ask you difficult, difficult questions, you know? So like, uh, 
Um, a follow-up question is: Okay, you can you can have like proof of humanity of a, of a user, um, and this can can be used. Uh, it's a gamification. I know it. I get it. But um, so um, how? Because there are certain services out there that can they have a. Um, Captcha farms, you know, they have like probably a, a, a like a room full of people uh, just solving captchas uh, and getting paid per captcha successfully captcha solved, and uh, you know they get they get cents uh, to to provide this service, and you know like a lot of uh, bots. Uh, um, uh, Kind of bots or companies or uh, just hire them to test uh, products and this kind of thing. So, what kind of incentive model or well, you're gonna give you know to to miners and to people uh, uh, to overcome uh, um, actors on hiring these captcha farms in uh, in hiring basically humans to do the service because it's, it's economically viable. So like, what, what, did, did you thought about this? Did you think about this or not yet? Uh, we, I say we never thought about this, but uh, for your question, I have two points to share. First is that our game is way more difficult than just solving capture. So, um, but real human, uh, they will definitely can play our game. They can go through all those uh, requirements, challenges, but whenever they dive themselves into our games, that means they are real users. They are really playing our game. <laughs> no, but but this is, this is a good answer, you know, because you, you told me, um, okay, you I didn't think about this, but uh, maybe it will not be economically viable because the problems are harder than solving a captcha and you cannot be automated as a human, you know, like so easily. So like it, this means that you're going to consume more time and it, they have like um, uh, probably they need more intellectual power, you know, for the users, you know, to, to, to accomplish this NP hard game uh, tasks. So yeah, maybe, yeah, I'm just curious, like what is what is the point that, um, you know, this becomes uh, economically uh, not viable, but anyway, so I like, uh, I like it, uh, uh, I, I like it and I just have a, a follow-up question. So do you have any kind of uh, revenue projections um, or a target audience that you're uh, thinking, you know, for, for, your, for the game? Yeah, our target users are, all uh, crypto projects that uh, who who want to implement fair distribution. I think that basically covers all. But we are uh, now we are building a game template. So uh, uh, I think um, as long as they are open to uh, add some game elements into their whole ecosystem, we we can help. We can help them. Yeah, that brought up a, a question I have. So uh, to participate in the mining processes, you have to create a game essentially. And whoever wants to create this game can change the the resources that a player mines. Does the project themselves need to create the game or are you providing a template and essentially they're just changing the names out of sources? Oh, that, that depends. So uh, we can, uh, we can uh, take all the dirty work for projects, they can uh, provide us only ideas and we can do everything for them. And uh, if they are able to, you know, um, build a whole app from their, um, from scratch, of course, uh, they they may want to do, uh, do that by themselves. But still, uh, the, the, the point of this template is because the algorithm of um, activity generation is really something to develop. Like I said, uh, activities are generated based on users' current inventory. So we kind of give them um, activities uh, with consumption um, uh, quantities uh, proportionally to their uh, current inventory to keep them moving forward. So uh, they, so uh, algorithm like this and other, uh, other uh, complex elements in this game is the, uh, is the key point that we want to relieve developers uh, and uh, project builders from so they can focus on more important aspects. Yeah. Cool. 
Uh, and so we're we're at we're at the end of time, but I do want to help the questions that Gil and I asked help you make your proposals for for funding for grants through Elevate um, a lot more successful. So I guess kind of the last question that I'll ask that might help you tailor your application for any one of the three tracks is what are the considerations that you take into account when you're looking to partner with an L1 or an L2 to store data on? And um, maybe you could share or highlight some of the experiences that you already have on EVM chains that you might be able to replicate and embed onto NeoX. Uh, well, EVM, uh, we all know that uh, it has amazing ecosystem, but uh, the old problems are still there. So for other L1 or L2 change, definitely everyone has its own uh, specialties and um, yeah, we're open to all uh, kinds of uh, cooperation, collaboration, but I think these are so in detail. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. definitely, uh, we are interested in Neil. Yeah. Cool. Well, Penny, thank you so much for, for joining uh, the first episode of On Deck and, and for pitching what you're working on at Mind Matrix. It sounds really cool. And it sounds like a really uh, innovative way to possibly distribute uh, tokens amongst other things uh, that ecosystems can leverage your project to build on to more fairly distribute uh, resources within a new chain or within a new ecosystem. So thank you so much for, for joining us. We really appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Gail. Your, your questions are so inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Yeah, Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> All right. And our final guest for the day is Nick. Let me bring Nick up. Um, I'm here. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Well, we, mm -hmm. we went over a little bit of time, so I'll just give you a little bit of um, overview for, for what the purpose is of, of this pitch. Um, really, On Deck is a show that takes a seven to, minute pit, seven to 10 minute pitch from your project, which is a sister. And then Gil and I try to provide insight and feedback for how you can um, identify the opportunities and minimize the constraints when applying for funding for Elevate. And Elevate is a grant funding program in the NEO ecosystem for projects to build on the NEO X EVM sidechain. There is up to $20 million in funding available, and there are three tracks. The first track is Genesis, which is for early stage projects, and that offers up to $50,000 uh, for any project building in any Web3 vertical, um, and also for providing toolkits, educational resources, uh, more general things like this. The second track is the partner track, which is established infrastructure projects that are already live on EVM networks and have established users or established uh, a little bit of traction. And then the third track is offering up to $500,000 in funding. However, this is, these are projects that are already established. They have a minimum of six months of operation and generally a little bit of revenue that's already associated and they have a proven business model. So um, after you give your seven to 10 minute pitch, Gil and I will really try to draw out the best questions that can help uh, a sister become more competitive when applying for Elevate program funding. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of an overview for um, why we're here and, and what the goal of our back and forth after you give your pitch will be. Thanks uh, guys. Uh, can you let me share a screen? So I will try to do my best even in shorter time. No worries. Um, a little bit more about uh, what we're building at Assist here. Yeah, and also if you're starting to um, get close to the end of the time limit, I'll just put up the timer on my phone uh, to let you know that we're kind of getting there. Um, <laughs> and so with all that said, go ahead and uh, feel free to introduce yourself yeah. and, and jump into the pitch. Yeah, <laughs> thanks again. My name is Nick um, and our team is building Assist AI, which is a network of specialized small language models uh, owned by community. So our thesis is own your data, own AI, own the future. What is a sister? We started with hackathons. So our team was active in hackathons since the beginning of the year. Uh, even before we were actively participating, even, you know, like before team creation. So then we uh, won several hackathons with the current idea. We raised our pre-seed round in Q3. Right now we have more than 70 integration with different platforms and chains. We have more than 400,000 registered users on the platform, and we already secured some money. So we have a lot of plans for the next quarter, uh, for, for the next one, two quarters, including uh, another round, including uh, TGE, if the market condition would be good. So the problems that we are targeting is that 
all uh, <coughs> AI owned by big tech is extractive and monopolistic because all the business model from big tech is exactly the same. So users, they are sharing the data to the platforms, platforms lock up their data, lock up their users, and then they're using data to train the models, centralize AI, and then users need to pay for the centralized AI trained on, on the data, initial data. And there is no way that anyone can actually get some portion of fair rewards for their data. And the big tech, they would love to keep the situation as it is, but there is a huge problem with last miles, uh, last mile challenge with the data required for the model accuracy. That's where you probably heard about Reddit, Quora, Stack Overflow scandals, where big tech guys just came to these platforms by the data generated by users, but not paid to users anything. So it's like it's a multi-dollar agreements, like hundreds and like tens of millions of dollars a yearly agreements and nothing to users. So how, like what's the next? And we believe that specialized AI models is the next big thing because old way, the user was using different LLMs. Uh, then he gets response and this response could be low quality, hallucination. It can be not relevant or whatever. And it's your problem what to do. The new way, it's basically user is describing a problem and there is a reasoning process. And maybe you heard, maybe listeners and you uh, saw the latest presentation from OpenAI. They presented this uh, model which <laughs> doing this reasoning uh, by coping itself and acting like, hey guys, let's discuss what this guy actually wants from us. Let's find the best solution and so on. So in that way, it can be a solution for real world problem. Uh, and it's up to date, it's relevant, it's actually good. So where a sister stands for, we offering a network of this community owned small language models. And we presenting this gig workers, AI gig workers, where you can create model, contribute data, validate the data quality to the models that we are hosting on our SLM store. And end user can use them, either it to be B2B or B2C. And the money is generated by this model. Coming back to the uh, gig workers that are working with us, and also we as a platform capturing some portion of this money. So we see a huge market opportunity because any mobile app actually can be AI first app. And we believe that the small language models can empower this application in the first place. But also with the tokenization of this each application, each small language model, there is a huge secondary market that we also contribute to. And we want to be a platform that provides this opportunity for end users and, and, and real data owners. We established first proof of concept. We earn it on it like first 100K in three months. We see that it can be scaled. And our goal right now to showcase and share our approach with many other builders to get them on a platform, to give them our instruments and get them to the state when they will actually monetize the data. So where we are right now, we did a tech validation. We did a proof of concept. We launched smart SLM marketplace. Right now we are at a community led growth. So we launch an AI lab in next two weeks with different categories, with different verticals. We're going to be launching incentive program for builders to actually build the small language models and then public launch end of the year. Uh, in terms of the market positioning, it's a little bit weird slide, it's still under the work. Uh, so we in the AI space, we have hardware, we have infrastructure, including Neo, we have data layer, we have consumer facing applications, but then we trying to be on the edge where we provide an infrastructure and we also want to be the platform that solves real world problems. So we want to provide the small language models to any use case to solve targeted specialized problem instead of providing general response or general support. So what are we looking right now? We secured our round, but we're looking for more partners. We're looking for data providers, for startups who wants to use our small language model and embed them to their agentic frameworks. And also we're looking for devs and apps builders who wants to make the applications really smart. Let's see it. We'd love to answer your questions. Wow, that was awesome. You you packed a lot of punch into a quick pitch. Um, I, uh, I've already started recording. Um, so one of the things that really stood out to me, uh, we we covered uh, the Assister project uh, at Neo News Today after you were in a hackathon that Neo was involved in and, and you won one of the, the Neo Mini Awards. Um, and something yeah. that really stood out to me was the power of these small language models. A lot of people are starting to use LLMs when they start using ChatGPT or Venice. Um, what are SLMs? How can I, as someone who only uses ChatGPT and that is my only interaction with AI, 
Um, how can you help somebody who might be just your average crypto user kind of grasp and understand what an SLM is? And what is the power that SLMs offer to the broader AI space? Yeah, of course. The point is that LLMs are trade on general information. So it's basically they took the data from the internet. And if you will check what is there on the internet, there is a lot of smart things, but also there is so so many weird things, you know, like people believe it's like like hidden government ruled by reptiles or whatever. So, you know, like, so by end of the day, you have like average, average smart uh, AI that is good and bad for everything, but not good enough for specific tasks. So if you try to solve some real things for business, they would be fucked up. And like, and for business, it really matters because if your SLM or your LLM or your AI is, you know, like losing you 30% of your clients because like each third time is hallucinating or providing the wrong response, you are losing real money for it. It, it. it simply doesn't work to you. And there is a huge need into data accurate models that can be trained on the right data. You don't need too much data, but this data should be highly curated and it should be handpicked by people who actually have expertise in that area. So with small language models approach, we offer in this approach and we want to incentivize and give this small community of experts instruments to launch their domain specific models to target specific problems and be on an edge of the market. So it's like this small language model would be overperform any large language models. That's where we see a huge market opportunity for them. And just to add on before you jump in, Gil, do you have any like examples of verticals that have provided this data for SLMs right now? <laughs> yeah, sure. So we started with uh, Web3 protocols. So right now we're already serving a lot of DevRel use cases where developers need to get timely and accurate support when they started joining any ecosystem and they need to get support from the ecosystem in terms of how to build, how to write smart contracts, because every ecosystem has its own, you know, like specifics and like you need to learn everything from the basics. And a lot of developers actually, they are cross-chain developers by the end of the day, because they are trying to build on two, three, five chains, especially if they participate in a hackathon, they need to, and they try to won maybe five or 10 bounties by in integrating with different chains. So that's our initial use case, which we already like probably the best in the market, but we don't want to limit ourselves only to developer community. We want to give this instrument to any creators. So if you, for example, have a lot of content on decentralized AI topic or maybe DeFi or maybe something else, you can feed this data to this model and you can invite some colleagues from the industry like, hey, let's build this model together. We're going to be co-owners of this model. And if other people are going to be using it, we're going to be monetize our data and we're going to monetize, you know, like our effort because we already own this data and it's already somewhere on our laptop or somewhere on YouTube channel. And we don't have an incentive to share it with uh, OpenAI or whatever, but here is something that we own that we can monetize and that we can give to our communities. Yeah, I love that. Um, Gil, feel free to jump in after I, I bring this up. But uh, Neo it started in 2014 as Neo Legacy and then migrated to Neo N3 in 2021. So for a lot of developers who might be going to ChatGPT to learn how to code a contract, uh, the LLM might be giving them um, code that is based on Neo Legacy code, which is defunct and outdated now, when what they really needed was support and resources for Neo N3. And because of hallucinations and because we have uh, we have this backlog of Neo Legacy code and data, they're getting churned out wrong information that is irrelevant and useless for coding on N3, and it becomes a frustrating experience, uh, Gil. Exactly. Go ahead. Hundred percent, and, and like that's exactly the same happening everywhere on every chain. So the problem is that if you will go to like we have one, uh, we have one um, investor who actually did the next thing. He took our models for different chains, like for four of them, and asks the same question, couple questions for each model, and then he goes to OpenAI and he compares it. And it's like just OpenAI provided me like hallucination. It doesn't make sense, and you provides me really clear responses, so I see real value. But however, as I mentioned, like it's very limited use case for developers, and we're trying to cover more use cases, more verticals, uh, being basically a marketplace for small language models, not marketplace only for one type of models. Cool. Uh, yeah, uh, great presentation, Nick. Uh, yeah, thanks for it. So I, my first question is more related to resources, because like a large, large uh, LLMs, um, for example, in OpenAI, Tropic, and you know, others, they are uh, trained 
uh, in specific hardware optimized, you know, uh, and uh, it's, um, of course, it consumes a lot of resources, but at the end of the day, that's their job of these companies to optimize it until the last mile on, on in, in providing, uh, of course, um, good responses, timely wise, etc. So I'd like to hear from you um, in SLMs, uh, what is the compromise in terms of hardware usage? Uh, and um, so is the same kind of requirement or we can expect these SLMs uh, running in smaller devices, less powerful, um, you know, because the models will be more specialized. So because, because if, if your answer is yes, uh, that's a great opportunity, but also, um, you know, it's, it's, it's also can, can shoot in your own feet because uh, GPUs and hardware is, is already something that is not widely available out there. So like, mm. um, you know, people, people are starting, okay, I don't have like hardware, but I can, I need to run my SLM, which consumes less power. Uh, so I need like um, an ADA, an ADA, um, like uh, uh, some sort of like NVIDIA cards, which are not H100s, but uh, they will not be available to buy. So, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm, I know that is a very kind of long yeah. uh, question here, but I just, just, because there is a part of um, some contradictory kind of things that I see here, and I would like that you that you that you touch this point. Yeah, that's that's actually a very good question because uh, hardware <laughs> is a bottleneck right now for all industry, and that's why we have this like deep in projects who are offering you know like let's organize a network of contributors of the hardware in into the common network, and that's how we will lower down the prices and make available compute. A GPU, CPU, and so on. So in our case, like first of all, we actually can run the small language models on, on edge. So it's on devices, it's laptop, it's mobile phones, it's small servers. So it's like pretty good. Second part, we're quite pragmatic. We didn't found strong part product market fit yet. So we still believe that we're in this process and building and finding product market fit. So, but we also get a lot of support from uh, Google, from AWS, from OVH cloud, from decentralized storage and GPUs and CPU providers. So they all given us a lot of perks, like, hey guys, take it, you know, like, let's see where we end up. So from our side, we're gonna be providing for users and users everything for free, at least for the first half year, or at least till the moment when we will see that there is like leading uh, applications and leading verticals where they start actively generating revenue. Then we will start introducing some like monetization and we'll start introducing some cost structure for them. But so far, we're just like firing budgets from big tech uh, to, to build something that's going to be competing with big tech. So <laughs> that's how yeah. it works. So, so I just have like another question about, uh, okay, we could end basically, you know, the uh, now after my, my question, but this is the holy grail. How I see, I see a sister uh, with very good use cases off chain. What about a sister on chain? So what about the sister in Neo X and how it will play, you know, uh, because helping helping content uh, like SDKs, tooling, et cetera, to, to find content um, and, and this kind of thing like off-chain is one thing, but uh, yeah, touch on the use case on chain, please. Yes, yeah, so it's like with on-chain, it's basically by the end of the day, it's quite similar. It all depends on the use cases that would be picked up and launched by community members because we cannot launch, you know, like thousands of use cases in centralized way because like it's just not not a way how how like small team can operate. So what we see there as this opportunity first, we already had a conversation with several DeFi AI agents protocols who are building this like AI agent stuff. And this agents, it's like collection of smart contracts and like if, then, logic and so on. So they don't have a smart brains. And it's like we, our community can provide the smart brains for this uh, DeFi agents. Same with uh, guys from Magnet AI, same with Talos, for example. So they're building amazing projects, but they don't have this brain on behalf. They are relying on centralized AI at this moment of time. And my bet is that we're going to be empowering this agents, agentic frameworks, as uh, with like real smart brains, with many brains that you can choose whenever you're solving, let's say something on Solana, you can choose Solana's, uh, you know, like small language model. If you're using and solving something on Ethereum or layer two of Ethereum, you're going to choose other small language models. So that's that's what our bet and that's where we see our sweet spot for ours. 
Awesome. Thank you for uh, touching on how you're going to impact the the NEO ecosystem on chain. I think the last question I have that could really help kind of uh, make your pitch to the Elevate program a, a little bit stronger is how can how will funding from this grant program really help a sister get from $300,000 in revenue and boost it to a million dollars in revenue? Yeah, I think like we, we're at the stage when we actually have a very strong product at this moment of time. We have a really good team, but we want to expand the marketing and BD activities. So there, I see a lot of space where we can improve and I see a lot of activities that we can uh, organize, including hackathons, presence on different events, organizing different uh, like local events in different areas where the big conference is happening. So I think like this direction going to be like crucial for us in the next two quarters and this money can be allocated in that direction. Perfect. Well, Nick, thank you so much for joining on deck today. It was really cool to hear from a sister. Congratulations to your rapid growth and success. And uh, we, we look forward to seeing you around the ecosystem a little bit more. Thank you guys. It was great Cheers. to chat with you. Cheers. Secure. All right. And with all that said, we just pitched, powered through three pitches and, and did a little bit of Q&A. Um, I thought that that was a really interesting batch of projects, Gil. Uh, I think we, we, we're going to see a lot of different types of, of projects from different verticals uh, applying for Elevate, Elevate program funding. Um, what was just kind of your general thoughts on, on today's first episode? I think like it's um, it's 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 really interesting because uh, there are some approaches that I would not have I mean uh, I would not have imagined before you know going the way that the projects uh, went but you know it's 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 interesting I just um, I just think that uh, projects have to emphasize a bit more you know neo and like the integration of neo and new acts but um, and of course while giving. Uh, showing the dream and the potential, you know, of growth. Uh, I think that uh, uh, some projects do this really well. Some other projects, you know, have to catch up and, uh, you know, for for the final uh, pitch to to the Elevate program. But uh, in general, I, I like it. Uh, great experience. Yeah, um, I agree. It was uh, really great to hear from Alex from Pixuti, to hear from Penny from Mind Matrix, and to hear from Nick from a sister. Um, we really appreciated uh, the pitches and, and just like a lot of the projects that are on the first episode of On Deck, and this might be the first time they're thinking about pitching to Elevate, I think Gil brings a lot of great points. Really think about how you're going to impact NEO and NEO X when making your proposals to this grant program. And of course, this was also our first episode, so we have a lot of lessons learned to walk away with uh, for, for future episodes for really how we can help draw um, these questions that can be answered out of out of projects. Um, so with all that said, we have uh, gone over our recording time. Um, I look forward to the final product that Neo is going to release with this. Um, so I want to once again thank the three guests that we had um, come join and give a rapid pitch about their project and, and do a, a little bit of Q&A back and forth. Uh, Gil, you brought some fire questions. It was awesome to hear your interactions with them. I myself enjoyed um, asking those projects themselves. So with all of this said, this was the first episode of On Deck. Uh, we are looking forward to recording a handful, if not many more. And for anyone who is watching this now, please feel free to go to x.neo.org backslash elevate to learn more about the Elevate program. And if you're interested in joining On Deck for a future pitch, please reach out to me, to Gil, or anyone at Neo Global Development, and we will gladly um, entertain the idea of having you join the show. So until the next time. Cheers, everyone. Thanks. Mm -hmm.